Welcome to my OCRA A-Level Biology Revision Session with me, Christine. So today's lesson, I want to look at bioinformatics and computational biology. So this is part of your manipulating genome topic area. So how do we understand bioinformatics and computational biology? Well, the first thing to know is that bioinformatics is the development and use of computers to organize large quantities of biological data. So if you haven't already checked out my video on DNA sequencing, then please do. But what I'm talking about is things like DNA sequencing. If we have the DNA sequence for an organism, we can then take that biological data and store it and use it. If we understand protein structure, so protein structure is to do with the sequence of amino acids. The sequence of amino acids came from the DNA sequence. So therefore, bioinformatics is all about this development and use of computers to organize and store these large quantities of biological data. Computational biology, on the other hand, is where scientists are going to use the biological data and they're going to use it to build simulations and theoretical models to try to uncover patterns and insights. So, for example, protein structure, if we know that a sequence of amino acids is going to cause the secondary structure of the protein that folding and then the tertiary structure of that protein and the quaternary structure of that protein, we can then use biological data to come up with theoretical models as to if there's any mutations within that DNA sequence, how might that affect the way the protein will actually fold? Or it could be to do with mo molecular pathways, or it could be to do with gene regulation. So when we're looking at bioinformatics and computational biology, we need to think about the words such as the algorithms, the database, the software tools that are going to be used. And then with that stored data, that, those mathematical models, those simulations and the statistical analysis that can be done on that information. So you need to know about how bioinformatics and computational biology are actually contributing to biological research. And there are three key areas they want you to know. One, genotype and phenotypic relationships. So let's look at bioinformatics then. If we use large scale genome sequencing data to identify genetic variants linked to a specific trait or disease, that is bioinformatics analyzing both the protein coding genes and the regulatory elements in non-coding regions, i.e. when we're talking about regulatory genes producing repressor proteins, they will therefore influence gene expression and therefore influence phenotypes. Examples, identifying genes associated with characteristics like your height, your eye color, or a predistribution to disease such as diabetes. So the computational biology side of things would be where you use mathematical models to predict the effect of those specific genetic mutations on that phenotype. Include simulations of molecular processes, such as the way the proteins are going to fold to understand how mutations might lead to misfolding of proteins and diseases. And that therefore means that we can use an example of simulating the protein structure to predict how a genetic mutation might disrupt the function. How does it affect the tertiary structure? Therefore, how might that then affect the way in which it catalyzes a reaction? If we look at epidemiology, epidemo I cannot even say that word, epidemiology, Bioinformatics is the essential one for tracking and analysing pathogen genomes. So helping to understand disease spreads and evolution. So if we can understand any of the diseases, we can then look at identifying those mutations, studying the transmission chains. Where did it come from? How did it start? And COVID-19 is a prime example of this. So bioinformatic tools analyzed the SARS-CoV-2 genome worldwide 
and they therefore were able to track the emergence and spread of those variants. Now, the computational biology side of things would be where you would build predictive models to simulate that disease spread and assess intervention impacts. Also using these techniques like agent-based modeling and compartmental models to simulate different public health strategies. And that would be things like thinking about vaccination programs. We have a real issue right now with regards to the antibiotic resistant strains of bacterial colonies. So if we are able to use bioinformatics storing and using large databases for our biological data and then using the computational biology to model and be able to simulate what we expect to happen, we can then use that in a way of predicting and preventing further outbreaks. And the last one you need to know is about evolutionary relationships. So using tools like BLAST to compare DNA and protein sequences across the species to identify homologous genes. Now you're not expected to know any detail on this. What they will expect you to know is that bioinformatics is about the use and the organization of databases, software tools, and the computational biology is about the way in which we can model and simulate and do statistical analysis on it. So if they're going to give a question on this, they will give you an example, which is what I'm trying to do now, giving you an example to show you how the bioinformatics side of it works, using tools to compare DNA or protein sequences. In that way, we can then infer whether there's an evolutionary relationship. We can analyze those similarities and differences between the genetic makeup. So revealing if we have close evolutionary relationships between, for example, humans and primates. So if they're going to give you a question on this, they're not expecting you to memorize any of this information. It will be application. How can you apply your knowledge about bioinformatics and computational biology for how they can contribute to biological research. So the computational biology part of it is using phylogenetic models. Looking back to module four, phylogenetic models constructing evolutionary trees and looking at the mutation rates on that sequence data. Inferring evolutionary relationships and tracing those evolutionary history. And also mapping this ancestry. So we could look at influenza virus, for example, and seeing and understanding its evolution and adaptations. So the key thing to know with anything to do with bioinformatics and computational biology is to take a step back and think bioinformatics, databases, storing, using large quantities of biological data. That's the bio side of it the biological data, informatics, the computers, the software, the databases, computational biology is how you're going to then use that data to simulate mathematical models, simulations, statistical tests. So I hope you've liked this video and if you have then please do click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also do check out my revision platform www.eiqchat.com.